walking on this little uh, side street here in Bangkok in the Siam area of uh, downtown I guess it's downtown Bangkok and uh, what we're doing is we're uh, we're looking for the Jim Thompson house which is supposed to be uh, even though it has a it has a oddly non-Thai name it's supposed to be a, a representation of a traditional Thai house staying literally 40 seconds away from here which is why we'd save this for our last day in uh, in Bangkok at the entrance. It's pretty cool. See that guy? He was spitting, he was getting the silk from the silk bug and now... Silk bug? That's what it's called. I thought it was a silk worm. Bug worm. There, he was getting it from the silk worm or whatever and now after it's dried it, I guess she spins it. Wow, that's so cool. Restaurant here looks. Uh, oh, it, it looks very, very welcoming. Really nice. Okay, you got the pod and the fish. fish. Let's keep going. So, so <laughs> as you come, it's Hi. Hi. Uh, we have a tour that starts at 11:55, and I don't, actually I don't know what time it is now. But uh, in the meantime, we're just we're gonna explore uh, just the little garden and the little shops. It looks really nice here. What's really cool about it is uh, this house is uh, situated right in between these uh, residential buildings. It's basically downtown Bangkok. You would never think it while you're here. It's just uh, it's just so serene. As you can see, you can't really tell that you know there's high rises condominiums everything just surrounding this area Ooh, okay okay let's let's just take a quick walk before the tour starts in the in in this area that looks uh, that looks like a jungle However, when he discovered the beauty of Thai silk, he decided to approve it internationally. He went to New York City with the traditional colorful silk to show the editor of Vogue magazine and fashion and stage designers. Americans were impressed with the beauty of Thai silk and began sending orders to the Thompson. When the result made a song, his Thai silk was used in the musical, The King and I. Mr. Thompson became famous. Based on the success, he founded the now well-known Tim Thompson Thai Silk Company. And across the canal from us is the Bangkrua Muslim community. The residents of Bangkrua were known for their fine weaving skills. When he started his business, Mr. Thompson would come here to order silk. Later, he decided to buy land in Bissau's here to be closer to his weavers. He incorporated Western, uh, Western technique or Western ideas, I guess into this uh, into this house so basically one room one house but all the houses here are connected from the inside I guess that's helpful during the rainy season oh you can actually see the canal 
yeah, right behind that. Yeah. Right. I couldn't see it from up there, but you can. The canal is right there. Uh, and when Tim Thompson moved to Thailand, he began to collect Southeast Asian art. He had an excellent eye for beauty, and he wanted to preserve local cultures on a way to land it. Then the collection remained in Thailand. This stunning image of the Buddha comes from central Thailand and dates to the 7th century Thawalawadi period when there was an important monkinum here and this is the oldest Buddha image in the collection and this made of grey limestone. This is around 1,400 years old. Alright, we're just about to go in the house. No pictures or video inside so I'll see you once we're out. All right, so we're done. That's that was very neat. It's a shame I couldn't take video in there, but uh, it was, it's kind of fascinating the house and uh, you know this Jim Thompson. He uh, he disappeared in 1967 mysteriously. We have no idea what happened to him, but uh, he spent a lot of a lot of time, a lot of his life here in Thailand, amassing artifacts from uh, from different regions of Thailand. So you have uh, a lot of things from Ayutthaya, which used to be the capital of Thailand. Uh, that, that was destroyed. But uh, the, the thing that, that actually fascinated me is how he incorporated Western style and Thai style into many parts of his house. Uh, I, I guess he would try to entertain some of his uh, guests, uh, assuming they, uh, they were Western, uh, by uh, you know putting things that are familiar to them, such as well, bathrooms. I guess he had a bathroom in there. And uh, from my understanding, Thai houses usually had bathrooms outside. Uh, it's a really cool house. What did you think? It's very beautiful. I would love to live in a house like that. Yeah. But it's what like so serene. Like serene. Yeah. yeah, so serene, right? to get honestly this food looks off the hook prices are just a little higher but it's what you would expect here the decor is really nice in here it's kind of like um, a trendy Thai restaurant it's really chill they have like this very very subtle music playing in the background and of course they have outside seating but which actually looks really nice because you're sitting by the by the fish pond but inside you get the uh, the killer air conditioning so pluses and minuses it's all about choices oh yeah mango paradise mm. oh that's really good no it's actually uh, with yogurt it's money with yogurt but it tastes like mango yogurt oh that's really nice wow that's my curry I'm very excited by this Musaman curry. Oh. Alright, so we have chicken in here. We have... Um, it's hard to tell what everything is because everything is... Um, is so red, so infused with, uh, with the red pigments of that uh, red curry. But this is, uh, this is a potato. Alright, let's first taste the chicken. It's really nice. It's not tough at all, actually. It's really moist and juicy. I actually wish it was a little spicier, but the level of spice here really works. That's incredible. It's more expensive, but everything's good. It's like a four-star, five-star restaurant quality. It's like really good. And one thing I like, I've had a big issue so far, is that they use a lot of grease on the cheaper food. They can get much cheaper, but you're gonna have like, no joke, like a couple of tablespoons of grease. Like more than a couple of tablespoons, like at least four. So this is not greasy at all. There is oil in it, but like to a normal extent. And the kids, they are chowing down too. So this is their pasta plate, and it's basically done, and that was, that was filled to the top. And um, there's a... Uh, there she is. 
Hey Ella, do you like the food? Huh? Say thumbs up. Say thumbs up if you like your food. What about you, Rose? Say thumbs up. Say hello. <laughs> oh god, they're all messy. Oh man. It doesn't matter, they always get messy. But they don't always eat all their food, so they're loving it. Well, I got my my bowl of coconut soup. And uh, it comes, of course, with a spicy chili, dry spicy chili at the top. I think this, uh, this was uh, in some kind of oil because it seems to be oozing out oil into the soup that's uh, kind of incorporating into the body of that, uh, of that coconut, uh, coconut broth, I guess we could say. Oh man. It's really sweet and a little sour. So it's not too sweet uh, because the sourness kind of balances that. It's kind of rich, like um, in a light cream way, I would say. Basically lick the bowl. <laughs> Stick your finger. I'm taking it. That looks really good. <laughs> you want to try it? You want to eat mango and whipped cream? Is? With cream? What's that on the top? <laughs> Here's the mango with the sticky rice. And it comes with a nice beautiful flower decoration. It's a beautiful dish actually. I love how it's plated. I just mine too. It's just an outstandingly beautiful dish. And we have the sticky rice. I I'm gonna take a guess and say that's some coconut cream on top. And there's these little there's these little guys that look like corn kernels, but they're not. Mm, they're crunchy. Coconutty. Hmm. Okay, I don't think they taste like much. They're just a little salty. The cream is coconut. So uh, let's take a bite of that. Mmm, that's really, really good. Oh my god. I love sticky rice. Anytime I see it on the menu, I order it. But I honestly think there's no better combination between than between sticky rice and mango. Somewhere. Oh man, I ate so much. I ate so much. I am ready to burst. But yes, I am. Exactly. But it was all worth it. That was some of the best food I've ever had. I would say top five meal. The Jim Thompson's house is uh, it's quite the attraction here. But I would say even if you're not interested or even if you've done it, because if you do it once, you don't have to do it again. Just come here for the restaurant. You will not regret it. Our bill came to 3,590 baht. I know, right? 3,590 baht which is uh, the most expensive meal I've had in Thailand <laughs> by, by at least over a thousand baht but honestly it could have been like two thousand baht less if, uh, if uh, we didn't indulge which we did we had two courses each we had four desserts we had a, a lot of drinks uh, I you know mango smoothies and you had like you had the, the lychee martini and stuff and which was really nice like everything was top top notch like five star on basically everything Whew. that was an experience that was an experience in a meal